Hi, welcome to episode number two of the Zero Pages. In this episode, we're going to be talking about number systems. So what are number systems? Why do we care about them? What do we use them for? Well, number systems are basically a way of representing values uh, in a written form. So, for example, if we need to represent a value for something that we're programming, we have to be able to write that down in a specific way that represents the value that we want accurately. And we use number systems all the time, we just don't realize it because we're so used to working with them. They're so ingrained in the way that we grow up and the way we're taught in school that we don't even realize that we use them on a day-to-day -day basis. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the number system base 10. Now, we probably don't think about this much when we're just talking about numbers in general, but when we were taught numbers in school, we were taught very specific concepts. For example, a number has different positions in the digits. It has the ones place and the tens place and the hundreds place and the thousands place. What does that actually represent? Well, that represents a system for writing down a value that we want to represent in written form. What that actually looks like if you break it down is a series of digits in different places that are multiples of a power of 10 to a specific number, starting with 10 to the zero, the ones place, 10 to the one, the tens place, 10 to the two, the hundreds place, 10 to the three, thousands place, and so on and so forth. So whether we want to represent the value five, 50, 500 or 5,000, base 10 lets us do that very easily. And again, this is something we do every day. We're so used to doing it that we don't think about it. So if we wanna represent the number 7,635, we can do that without having to think about, well, seven, it's the thousands. So I wanna put that in the fourth place. It's, you know, it's just, it's instinctual at this point. There are actually other number systems. And we don't use them on a day-to-day -day basis because we have no need for them in most circumstances. But when you're programming, there are three number systems that come into play often that you want to know about in order to be able to program successfully, especially on older hardware like the NES. So the three different number systems that are used are base 10, which is the one we use every day, base 2, which is the binary system, which represents digits with only a 0 and a 1, and base 16, which we'll talk about in a second, and that's called hexadecimal, or hex for short. So binary is base 2. You only have two digits, 0 and 1. If I want to represent a value like 2, how do I do that? There's only 0 and 1 in this counting system. Well, similar to how you did it in base 10, you can use a series of digits strung together to represent larger values. It's just done with a different base number. So instead of doing 10 to the zero and 10 to the one and 10 to the two and 10 to the three, you use two to the zero and two to the first and two to the second and two to the third. And using those values, multiplying those digits by those powers and doing a summation, you can represent a number like two with the value one zero. Now, normally you'd see that and say 10, but that's not actually right because that's the value 10 in base 10 and that has a very specific meaning. You can say that if you're clear that you're saying, you know, this is 10 in base two, but it might create confusion. So you're better off just saying it's one zero. So what about a number like 197? Well, you can represent that in binary also, and you would do that in the same way that you would in base 10, except using just ones and zeros. And so, using the powers that we talked about, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the second, two to the third, we can break down the number into a summation of single one values that multiply those places in the number, giving us the value 1100, and it's the same thing as if you did this in base 10, except we're so used to doing it that we don't even think about it anymore. We don't say, well, I need one value in the hundredths place, and then I need nine in the tenths place, and then I need seven in the ones place, because if you add all of that up, you get the value 197, right? That's just something we do intuitively. So now that leads us into a number system called hexadecimal. 
or hex, as I said before. So hexadecimal is a base 16 number system, and you use the digits 0 through 9 to represent... Oh, wait a minute. If it's base 16, and you have to use 16 digits to represent the number, well, we only have 10 written digits. How do we do that? Well, obviously there's an easy way to do that. What people have done is they've used some letters in place of numeric digits. So you use zero through nine to represent the value zero through nine. And then you use A, B, C, D, E, and F to represent 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 respectively. It's a little confusing at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. So why does base 16 matter? Why do people want to use hex to write digits when they're programming? Well, there are some important advantages. The first is that it correlates nicely when you want to represent a single byte. Two hex digits represent one byte. So if you want to write a single byte value, instead of writing out a bunch of binary digits, you can write two digits that represent that byte. With decimal, it might be two digits, it might be three digits, depending on how it falls in the decimal number system. Base 16, it's always going to be within those two written digits. One digit represents four bits. So it's really easy to write a value. For example, if we want to write the value 17, in decimal, it's 17. In binary, it's 001001. But in hex, it's simply 11. What about the value 85? In binary, it's 01010101. In hex, it's really simple. It's 55. Five. Another nice benefit of working in hex is that it's easy to convert back and forth between hex and binary. So, for example, you only need to know how to convert the value of 0 through 15 to binary and read the values of 0 through 15 in binary in order to convert back and forth and represent the full range of digits in hex. Going back to our example of 85 before, if I'm looking at the value in hex of 55, five, I know that the value in binary is 0101 for 5, and so looking at this hex value, I can easily see that the binary value is 01010101, and that follows with any other hex value that I want to convert to binary, and vice versa. If I look at a value in binary, say 0010, I know that hex digit for those four bits will be two. So why do we care about this? Well, when dealing with older hardware, frequently you're manipulating individual bits to communicate with devices and change settings with those devices instead of using function calls or driver calls because the hardware was too slow to be able to do that sort of thing in those days. So, for example, in the NES, when you want to turn on sprite rendering, you're setting a specific bit at a specific address in memory in order to tell the picture processing unit to start drawing sprites. Now, writing those values in decimal is possible, but it's actually more cumbersome than understanding how to do it in hex because the notation is much more compact and easy to work with. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Clairvis or comment on this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're interested in learning more about NES programming, on Mondays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm streaming live on Twitch. Come check it out. Thanks for watching and if you find this interesting, please subscribe to the channel.